Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 121 on Now You Know. Today's episode is brought to you, as always, by our amazing Patreon supporters. We couldn't do the show without them. They carry this entire channel. Thank you so much to all of you. And also sponsored by our friends at the Solar Powered Hotel in Schaumburg, Illinois, the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott. I highly recommend it. I've stayed there myself. And it's got electric car charging ports. Mm -hmm. And there's just one day left to get your limited edition Now You Know Baby Onesies. So if that's something you're interested in, head over there. Quick. Then it's gone forever. We mentioned this on a few shows back. The end of the Chevy Volt is coming. Mm -hmm. The first Chevy Volt went on sale in December of 2010. So this is a pretty amazing car because it was one of the first cars with any electric range whatsoever. Right. It was one of the first plug-in hybrids you could buy right and it became very popular today's volt can go 53 miles on electric charge i think back when it started it was like 20 or something mm -hmm. um, and you can get 350 miles of gas range so people don't have to worry about running out uh, but this car is going to be going away after the closing of the hamtrak assembly plant in detroit next year when gm closes that plant that's also where they make the chevy impala the cadillac ct6 and the buick lacrosse which isn't that's the combustor 9000 actually kind of Kind of weird that we predicted that That's almost. interesting, yeah. Mm. But the interesting question I have for you, Jesse, is that the Voltec powertrain, which is the powertrain that powers the Volt, um, is it possible that GM might be reviving this in an SUV or a crossover? Yeah, I mean, part of me wishes that they would go straight into full battery electric vehicles, but another part of me knows quite well that they do not have the batteries to supply uh, full battery electric vehicles with decent enough ranges. So I think that the Voltec would be a good balance between providing a car with usable range. I mean, keep in mind, if you have a Volt and you're, and you're doing daily driving with it, you are essentially an electric car. An electric car. Um, and then you have the gas range for the for the longer trips and stuff like that. So it's it's a it's a big plus for anyone getting it. Both in the you know the cost of, of charging and and for, the environment. and for the environment, so I think it would be smart for them to make a crossover on the same platform. I would hope that they would extend the electric range as mm. much as possible. But, but it will be a heavier. It car. It will be a heavier car, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean we'll have to see. It it depends, I think, a lot on the engineering of the Voltec powertrain system. How easily can you? pop that into a crossover. All right, so here's a story that affects just the next day, all right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Tesla is now offering a big financial incentive for Tesla employees to join their AP Autopilot 3 hardware test program. They need hundreds of more drivers on this program. So Elon wrote in an email last week to employees, important point I forgot to mention is that since we still only have premium interior available for Model 3, the $5,000 premium interior cost will be waived for this program. For those who have already ordered as part of the full self-driving program, Tesla will honor the discount. So that means if you're a Tesla employee, you can get the $5,000 premium interior, the $5,000 enhanced autopilot, and the $3,000 full self-driving for free. For free. That is a $13,000 value. And that's disappearing tomorrow. So just throwing that out there. I mean, if you're a, a Tesla employee, this is, I mean, does it, does it go on be free? <laughs> it's kind of just like a for, be free just offer. A, just a... <laughs> For the day. All right, so what are these pictures of, Jesse? So these are photos of what the Starship could look like. Now, what, wait, the Starship? This is uh, what was previously called BFR. Probably as a, as a PR move, they're changing it to Starship so there's no confusion. And I think it's a, it's a good idea. So these are prototype pieces at the SpaceX facility in Boca Chica, Texas, along with a bunch of Twitter posts by Elon talking about what is going on with this stuff. That's yeah. happening. Elon said, I will do a full technical presentation of Starship after the test vehicle we're building in Texas flies. So hopefully March, April. Everyday astronaut said, so this is the hopper and not just a mock-up. Oh, baby. And Alex Martin said, like SpaceX's grasshopper program prior to F9 landing attempts, Starship will undergo similar launch landing phase. Elon said, exactly. John Krause said, wait. March, April 2019, that is much sooner than expected, yes? Elon said yes. Now, for those of you wondering what Grasshopper uh, we're talking about, this was back in like 2013, 
2014 time frame. This is before SpaceX had relanded any of their boosters. Mm -hmm. This is before they'd even really launched any of the boosters that were going to come back and land. This was a test platform of basically a rocket that would go up and then come back down and land using all rocket propulsion, no, oh, no parachutes or anything like that, which for the time, no one had ever seen before. I would show this video to people all the time when I was talking about SpaceX because they didn't get it. And when I showed it to them, they were like, is that CGI? Wow, that I can't believe that it just did that. Um, so basically what Elon is saying is that this is going to be a test bed for Starship's you know, landing sequence to make sure that this much bigger, larger, different spaceship will actually be able to take off and land uh, vertically. That's exciting. Yeah. So Tesla's referral program has been extended until March 11th. This, this is, is really cool. Really exciting. A couple little changes. Um, you normally get six free months of supercharging, but if you haven't taken a test ride, you'll get an additional three months. So a total of nine months of free supercharging. And these are official test drives. Right. So this is if you driven the car exactly. at a Tesla dealership. Right. So you could drive with your friend. That doesn't count. Okay, but there are more perks, kind of unofficial perks. Oh, really? What, what are they offering? So, well, if you use our referral code, if you live in the United States, Canada, or Europe, we will pick you up at your house and take you for a ride in the Roadster, in the next generation Tesla Roadster when it comes out, hopefully around 2020. Oh, that's right. We were crazy enough to offer that. We were crazy enough to offer it. We're still offering it. We right. thought that the program was going to end tomorrow. It is not going to end tomorrow. It's going to end March 11th. So if you were pretty bummed out being like, oh, no, I'm not going to get a ride in the, in the Roadster. Wrong. Yeah. You You're can. Going for a ride. You can use our referral code down in the link below. We will come to your house in the Roadster. And blow your you mind. Up, blow your mind. We'll do the 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds. Make sure you find a stretch of road near your house where we can do this. And once you become an owner, you will get the ability to give your referral code out. And here are some things you'll get mm -hmm. for that. So with one referral, you'll get to launch your photo into deep space orbit. They'll now give you a limited edition hat to commemorate the launch. Mm -hmm. Because it's smart, because it's going to be months before that happens or years. Right. And so you want a hat to walk around and be like, I'm going to be launching something in space. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, with two, you'll get a signature black wall connector or the Founders Model S for kids. For three referrals, you get the Forge Performance Wheels for the Model 3. Which I think I've earned enough referrals to get. Nice. So, I mean, that's super exciting. Or sure. you can get the 21-inch Arachnid Wheels for the Model S or the 22-inch Turbine Wheels for the Model X. Or you can get one week with the Model S or X. Four referrals gets you priority access to vehicle software updates, and five gets you the Tesla unveiling invitation experience to an official unveiling event. A lot of people have seen these pictures. They've been traveling around the internet. These are uh, from last week at a Sheets in Hickory, North Carolina. These are a bunch of pickup trucks that parked in superchargers blocking access to other cars. Mm -hmm. um, this quote here, I've never had a supercharging experience like this one. These trucks blocked all the chargers chanting F Tesla and were kicked out by a Sheets employee. This is from Reddit user Lacina. She then said, who do you report activity like this to? It was really uncomfortable. Then Reddit user Redfield Standard posted a photo of what appears to be contractor pickup trucks parallel parked in front of the supercharger station at a Hampton Inns and Suites in El Paso, Texas. Now, I think it's important to mention that nine states have passed laws banning combustion engine vehicles from parking at electric charging ports. This would be Arizona, California, Florida, Hawaii, Illinois, Massachusetts, Oregon, Rhode Island, and Washington. There are also some cities that have done the same, including Washington, D.C., Seattle, Baltimore, Raleigh, North Carolina, and Knoxville, Tennessee. They all have local ordinances forbidding the practice. Now, I mean, what do you think you should do if you come across this, Jesse? Um, first of all, remain calm. This is obviously uh, a huge inconvenience to you. Obviously, you're trying to use a supercharger, and these people are blocking, and they're being very rude. Keep your cool. If you lash out at them, it only makes it a thousand times worse. So, Yeah, I mean, remember what Mahatma Gandhi said. First, they ignore you then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. So according to this, we're pretty close to winning because they're in the fighting stage. Yeah, I, I do recommend that you report them. So write down their license plate numbers. And, and, just, and I would go to the local. So like most superchargers or chargers are at a local business, like a hotel or restaurant. Right, it's a private 
right place so go to the the manager of that facility have them contact the police for you so you don't have to get actively involved and let them handle it this is very similar to stuff that we've seen before of big pickup trucks rolling coal on priuses where they basically ruin their their emissions standards pretty much illegally um blasting harmful emissions out at they did it at priuses back in the day. We want to psychoanalyze this a little bit. I mean, they're threatened. They feel threatened, right. especially with Teslas. With Priuses, they're just being jerks, I guess. But with Teslas, these vehicles are faster than them. Uh, right. they're, they are more expensive. That's all they've got left is right. to block you from your charge. That's that, it. That's it. I mean, they they can't really roll coal on you because you can just and, pass them. And let's a, just, it's not going to work. It's not like they're going to forevermore be able to park in these spaces. Uh, they're going to, you can call the police on them and we have their license plate numbers. Right. So the, it's, that's, it's a very ill thought out plan. Right. The, the worse that this gets, the more backlash there is against it, it which is why I encourage you do not lash out against them because right. that only creates more backlash against you and other tesla drivers right. so you know for the people who treat them like what they are they're a bunch of 12 year olds i mean right. that's how handle it like you would if a bunch of kids were doing something dumb just call the police have them handle it right usually you don't do that with with children but well these, these are, are these are older children are, yeah more dangerous children so tesla has two new board members if you remember the sec settlement said they had 90 days to appoint two new independent directors on the very last day tesla has made that appointment so this will be larry ellison who is the founder of oracle and he has a net worth of 60 billion dollars he's one of the richest people in the world he also just bought three million shares of tesla which is worth about a billion dollars um and he's a well-known philanthropist he was a board member and best friend with steve jobs on apple mm -hmm. so he's been around um and then kathleen wilson thompson who's the third woman to join the tesla board she has a law background and is currently the head of hr at walgreens so i think that these are two strong board members i mean you know a lot of people will tell you like oh elon's losing his grip on the company he's still the ceo he still makes basically all of the decisions right. and he is one, he is the largest shareholder in the company um he's not the majority shareholder but he has more than anyone else and plus everyone backs him so whatever he usually wants to do most people are with him on it right so you know all these news stories of like he's losing his grip on the company it's just fud it's exactly. just a bunch of lies i mean he's perfectly i'm pretty sure he's pretty happy with these these uh, board members so jesse and i wanted to tell you about this cool e-bike that we reviewed recently we have a review up on our channel if you want to get more in depth but um this is one of the cheapest e-bikes I've ever encountered. Uh, this is the Stark Drive Mini e-bike. It's a Swedish company, and we got one to review. Um, and this is a cool bike because it folds in half. Mm -hmm. And so we tested it out, and I couldn't believe that it was two ninety nine. dollars So you should really get over there if this interests you at all. But I mean, we drove it around, um, gave it kind of the full test, and it was cool because it has a lot of the features that more expensive e-bikes have. Like, so when you're driving, you can use the throttle to to give it power, but you can also pedal and then it has pedal assist, which means that basically it's like this smart uh, motor, which as soon as you start to pedal, it adds more power, makes you feel kind of like a superhero. Right. If you're looking to get into e-bikes and you don't want to spend a lot of money, this is probably the bike for you. It's not a full size bike. So if you're expecting on, you know, biking up mountains and stuff like that, probably not the right choice. But if you're thinking of doing some city biking or, you know, maybe for a short commute, I think that this is... A pretty good option you just recently went on a road trip um would you have brought something like this with you i actually regretted not bringing it when i was in washington dc i mean the, the national mall is humongous um there were a lot of people on on bird scooters and there were also a lot of people on these really beefy looking e-bikes which i think you can rent so i mean you, you could have probably rented them but i i was like man i mean i have an e-bike i i wish i had brought it because you know i, I did you know six miles walking that day and my feet hurt right and, and you could just throw it in the back of the car exactly so i mean i think for for trips and stuff um you know you see people going on segway tours you see people going on bike tours um it's a really great way to see a city and especially with this folding up throwing it in the back of your car I think it's a, a fun idea for road trips. So Tesla's been getting some complaints on the Model 3 about some cold weather problems. Um, 
Uh, recently, Fred over at Electric had some problems with this charge port, but there's been an update to the software. So what has that done? So this is 2018.50, uh, the software update that has it. it. It's called Cold Weather Improvements. It says when you set mobile charger preconditioning to high, the climate system will better thaw your charge port in freezing conditions. So, so I, I guess the problem was people were sticking in their charger and then the little thing that comes down to lock it in place was, was getting locked. It was getting frozen, frozen shut because there was some moisture in there, which then froze and prevented things from moving. So, so I guess the previous update kept that latch from going down in the first place, which right. was one solution. But I guess this one somehow is thawing it. How is it? How do you think it's doing that? So a lot of people are saying, like, how can the climate system of the car be heating something that's on the outside of the car? I don't think that this is what's happening at all. When you plug in your car at a level two charger, um, it charges you up. And then in the morning, your car is pretty much fully charged. So there's no no electricity really flowing through the charge port. Okay. Um, what I'm thinking is by basically wasting a bunch of energy by heating up your car, it needs to refill it. So it's going to be flowing um, power through the charge port. And I think what this will do is it'll warm it up enough to melt water. So above zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, doesn't need to get that warm. And running full blast heater system probably pulls around three kilowatts. So I'm guessing not only are you warming up your car, you're also warming up the charge port just by having the power flow through it. So, so I think yeah, that's I'd, the solution. I'd like to hear if, for people using this new update, if it's working for you, please let us know. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's amazing that Tesla can adjust things like this with software. So what is this, Jesse? This is, is this some kind of new car? Yes, this is the Aura R1. Um, and this is by the Chinese company Great Wall Motor. It has 194 miles of NEDC range, um, which puts it at around 150 miles of real world range. It is a 33 kilowatt hour battery and a 35 kilowatt motor, which is very small. It's about half the motor power of a of a leaf. Yeah, this thing can only hit a top speed of 100 kilometers an hour, which is about 62 miles an hour. So I mean, it's only good for urban driving, in my opinion. I think so. I think it's a good Chinese car. But get this: starting price is only eight thousand seven hundred dollars after incentives wow so i mean this is cheap and this is only on sale in china yes this comes with a three-year 120,000 kilometer warranty and an eight-year 150,000 kilometer warranty on the powertrain if you're in china this is a this is a good option now obviously the acceleration and the top speed are limiting factors here you're never going to get much top speed right. or acceleration and i mean the I range think. is a little lackluster but i think for any kind of commuting it's perfectly fine yeah now remember a few weeks ago we, we asked any of our viewers if they had any information about the es8 well check this out marcus does hi my name is thomas i'm a german and living since many years in china in ningbo close to shanghai and I got the chance to drive a Chinese luxury EV SUV called Mio ES8. This car is five meter long, has seven seats, two electric engines all wheel drive with 644 horsepower and an acceleration of 60 miles per hour in 4.4 seconds. The car is fully equipped with luxury features like head-up display, ventilated leather seats, the co-driver seats you can fold out to a sleeping possibility you know, with uh, like in a business lounge. And very funny, on the dashboard you have a, a cute buddy, you know, an AI assistant who guide you through your daily driving experience. Neo is called in China Wei Lai. This means blue sky is coming. So let us see if it is true. Okay, also this sound is a sound machine. Yeah. Okay. So ready? And ready to go. Yeah. And okay, it's three, two, one. <laughs> 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 Ja, da haben wir direkt schon ah. den Test gemacht. Warum hat ich die Töne hier hin? Wow. Okay, gut. Gut ist, dass die Karte has, has less Buttons. Aber für uns, wir haben alle Dinge, die wir haben, 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 die wir ha
Okay. Okay. Just play fine out. Okay. You do not make so fast. No, of course. Are you crazy? Okay. Um. D. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Nomi. What? What? Open the door. Open the door. Who? You don't see Dalma? Okay. Ah, thank you, my friend. You open the door. Hmm. Because I think the sound from the yeah your your seat. Yes. So you open that. Yeah, so that was Marcus Manshine, who runs the YouTube channel Tesla Marcus. It's one of the largest non-commercial YouTube channels in German, and it's all about Tesla and e-mobility. Thanks, Marcus, for sending that in. So uh, what are we looking at here? So Tesla just released this time lapse of how a Model 3 is made. There's a lot more people making it than I thought. Yeah, I mean, we had originally talked about like, oh, it's going to be this alien dreadnought full of robots. There are a lot of people working on this car. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It's definitely not the original intention of how the Model 3 was going to be built, but um, they're building them. And I'm seeing a lot of them and the sales of them are up hugely, which means that the production is up hugely. Really interesting how early they put the computer in the car. Yeah. And it's on before there are even seats. Yeah, it's like factory mode. I'm on now. Right, that's really cool. Yeah. All right, it's time for the lightning round. Here we go. All right, so there will be more superchargers, especially in Europe. Elon tweeted on December 26th, yes, supercharger coverage will extend to 100% of Europe next year, from Ireland to Kiev, from Norway to Turkey. Alexandros Ryko said, Greece too? Elon said, yes. Tesla owner Silicon Valley said, amazing. What about Africa? Elon said, 2020. Wow, this they is got the first... plans for Africa. That's amazing. That is amazing. There's kind of two stages of supercharger coverage, right? right. There's sort of the, the, the through way kind of coverage of like, get across a continent. Then it's densely packed. You can actually live there. You can actually be like, oh, I just need to supercharge on my way to... You know, someplace fairly nearby. On December 26th, Detroit News' Harry Payne tested over 60 vehicles this year, and he named what car as Vehicle of the Year for 2018? Well, it's Detroit, so I'm going to guess Chevy Malibu. The Tesla Model 3. Really? He said the $55,000 Model 3 succeeds because it is Apple on wheels. Musk reimagined the car like Steve Jobs rethought the phone as a study in design minimalism that is both gorgeous and more efficient than established platforms. The high-tech Model 3 reaffirms the joy of driving. Wow. So there's a new Tesla app update, which allows you to schedule service and to preheat the seats and the steering wheel. Did you get to use that on your trip? Uh, I did. I didn't need to use it, but I did just for the heck of it. So November saw sales of 3,053 fully electric vehicles in the Netherlands, which brings the 11-month total to 39,061. Now, when December's numbers are added, it should be about double the 21,000 from 2017. So that's 8.9% of all Dutch car sales being electric. Wow. So, I mean, EV sales almost doubled in the Netherlands. Yeah. And that's I mean, incredible. The Model S was the best selling EV with over 4,000 units, followed by the Jaguar I Pace and the Nissan Leaf. This is before, of course, the Model 3 Model has even 3. arrived. Wow. So, what is this about an Elon Musk ox? Well, the capital city of the Northwest Territories, uh, Yellowknife in Canada, had a poll to name its 11-foot-tall mascot, which is of a musk ox, and Elon Musk ox won the poll. Yellowknife communications officer Stephanie Vandeput said, we are definitely hoping to get a response from Elon Musk, maybe even invite him to our city for a meet and greet with Elon Musk ox. Yellowknife resident Eric Furmanwith came up with the winning entry, which received 123 votes. So this kind of, <laughs> I mean, this is a small number uh -huh. of votes. Runners up included uh, Medaya, which means the bearded one, Ethel, after Ethel Blondin Andrew, who's the first indigenous woman elected to Canada's parliament, and musky musk ox fakes. All right, so I wanted to point your attention to this new amazing tool I found out about from Global Fishing Watch, which allows us all to see in real time who is fishing where. So take a look at this. This is a map of the world, and in real time, you can pick any of these points that you see. You can zoom in, and you can click on them, and it'll show you the boat that is fishing there. 
you get to see the name of the vessel, yep. where it's from, and you can even find out where it is currently. Yeah. Now, this is amazing because now we can actually police our oceans. Because don't forget that there are rules about where you can fish and can't fish. We don't want to overfish, but we are overfishing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we found out here is that high seas fishing contributes only to 4.2% of the wild fish catches. 64% of fish go to the five richest countries. Um, but this new fishing watch program has allowed them to see that 20% of Chinese vessels are not broadcasting their positions via the automatic tracking systems, which leads many to believe that they're fishing illegally. Right. You basically shut off your tracking and then go into an area that you shouldn't be fishing in. Right. Um, a report published by the journal Science Advances in June showed that government subsidized high sea fishing with $4.2 billion in 2014. That means that more than half of high seas fishing would be unprofitable without the subsidy. Now, keep in mind that that's less than 5% of all the fish caught are in the high seas, and yet we're spending $4.2 billion subsidizing that industry. Lead author Enric Sala from the National Geographic Explorer in Residence said, governments are throwing massive amounts of taxpayer money into a destructive industry. Just over the last 40 years, there has been a decrease recorded in marine species of 39%. Yes, and illegal fishing accounts for an estimated 20% of the world's catch and as much as 50% in some fisheries. The costs of illegal fishing are significant, with the value of pirate fish products estimated at between 10 to $23.5 billion annually. And just take a look at this chart here. This is Atlantic cod fish, and it's showing it over the years. And it, look at what's happened recently. It's just collapsed. There are right. no codfish left. It's been overfished. Right. I mean, the Canadian government had to actually ban it. it they made it illegal for anyone to codfish because the fish weren't there anymore. Right. Like, they were going to be fished into extinction. Humans plus livestock, mainly cattle and pigs, now make up 96% of all mammalian biomass on our planet. If you're looking at all of the mammals that aren't humans cows and pigs would be four percent if you had a big scale wait wait so but there's like big ones like whales and elephants and rhinos and bears and hippos and caribou and elk and moose right all of those are on the the one end of the scale and you just have all these cows and pigs and humans on the other end and if you wanted to look at a different statistic the weight of domestic poultry which is mostly chickens is three times higher than all other species of wild bird combined we're talking ostriches we're talking eagles, emus, big freaking birds, chickens are three times more. Three times more. All right, getting back to electric here. Yeah. DAF is a Dutch truck manufacturing company. They partnered with VDL Group to build the 170 kilowatt hour battery pack and 210 kilowatt electric motor powertrain for their CF electric truck. And they just delivered one to the Dutch Jumbo supermarket chain for testing. It has a range of 100 kilometers with a 40-ton capacity. Now, it can quick charge in 30 minutes and come to a full charge in one and a half hours. I think this is pretty cool because it shows that these companies, which normally just made traditional ice trucks, are now saying, we need to start putting something out there that we can test. There are new California utility EV rebates coming in 2019. So if you live in California, check these out. Southern California Edison will give a rebate that's going from $450 up to $1,000. And PG&E is giving up from $500 to $800 now, this year. this is on top of state and federal incentives. Yeah, and so, this is true across the country. There are many utilities that will give additional incentives. So check them out in your area because it could be even cheaper than you think to buy an EV. Right. So it appears that the Model 3 has gotten new headlights upgrades since around June. Right. The headlights had only received an acceptable rating from the IIHS, which is the International Institute of Highway Safety. Here are their before and after test results. So yeah, you so you see. can see, yeah, they, they've gotten quite a bit more range out of them with the new headlight. Right. So, so I, it looks like you've got the new headlight and I don't. Right. So we should probably make a video on it. Yeah. All right. So this red semi was spotted by Reddit user Real Spicy Tuna on the 405 in LA. Now, we have not seen a red one before, so mm -hmm. this could be a totally new truck, or it could be the matte black one painted red. Check this out. This is a tweet from Bloomberg's John Ehrlichman. This is SpaceX's valuation shown in a graph form. So just to give you some idea, back in December of 2002, the company was worth $27 million. Today, it is worth over $30 billion. Right. That is a thousand times higher valuation. That is and, three orders of magnitude. And look at this curve. That is not a linear curve. No, that is an 
S curve. Yes. And it's not even begun to peak yet. And speaking of SpaceX, uh, these are some cool SpaceX stats from Octagrabber's Twitter account. 66th Falcon 9 launch, 65th successful one. This year. That's 98.5% success rate and the 50th Falcon 9 core to launch. Now, if you're saying, wait, how could they have launched 66 Falcon 9s and only 50 cores? That's because they relaunched some of the cores. So a new world record has been broken using a Model 3 in Mm -hmm. Germany. The team from G Electric broke the previous record of total distance traveled in 24 hours, which was previously a record made by a Model S of 2,442 kilometers. They hit 2,644 kilometers in 24 hours using the Model 3. The Guinness Book of World Records is now reviewing it to see if it is truly a record. All right, it's time for our video contributor story. So Mm -hmm. what do we got this week, Jess? We have Rizart and his family on their trip through Sweden and Norway. Love seeing that's, all those drone shots. That is a beautiful. I want to make that trip. Yeah, that's gorgeous. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. And so uh, this week we have a new thing that we're going to be starting. Right. Yes. Um, we're going to be giving a Model Three tip of the week. That's going to be a video that'll come out on Wednesdays. But if you want to see our tip of the week sooner, it'll be part of our Patreon bonus stories today. So head on over to Patreon for as little as a buck a month. You can support us and get to see all of it. Right. And keep in mind, there's there's more stories. <laughs> Hey everybody, we're back from the Patreon bonus stories. We had a really good time mm-hmm. telling you about the Model 3 tip of the week, um, which you can see if you go become a Patreon. So go do that. And now... Or you can wait till Wednesday. That's right, you can wait. Now we're giving our shout outs to Patreons who give us $5 or more a month. Super valuable to us. David Milia Kangas, Oscar L. Tehran, Hubertus Van Geldren, David and Paula Isley, Ron Timmons, A.L. Perry, Stefan Stefanowski, George Lett, Tom Wirtz, Michelle Grabuznik, Thanata Forek, Mason Combs, Craig Hart, Andre Rupak, and Matt Anderson. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting us. We I can't really do this show without you. Couldn't do it. It's time for Elon's Tweet of the Week. We just got one this week. Eric Ralph said, how about the chances that Starship reaches orbit in 2020? Elon said, probability at 60% and rising rapidly due to new architecture. 
<laughs> what? That's extremely exciting. That really is. I mean, 2020 is just around the corner. I know. All right, it's time for community mail time. We got a lot of mail this week. So you remember our friend Mary up at the Plug and Drive Electric Vehicle Discovery Center in Toronto, Canada. I want to say a big thank you to Mary for getting the word out firsthand to people. She works there, and every week she's telling people about electric cars. And look at all the electric cars in the parking lot. Awesome. We got this picture sent to us from our friend Justin of a Soviet-era electric mining truck. Now, which seems extra complicated to me is that it's a dump truck, but yet it's got the um, connection to the grid above. So, like, how do you dump and load with that in the way? I think maybe it's got, like, a battery or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. It's it, it shows that, like, you know... Electricity Electrics, makes sense. It does make sense. It's been here a while. Yeah. Our friend Jay Pay sent us this photo of the drive stock from a Model 3. Now, this was left behind in his car after he brought it in for service, and then he had it, mm. and it was like, uh, did you want to leave that in my car? And they were like, no, please return it. So then we got this video from Gustavo and Jose in Costa Rica. Hello, uh, Zach and Jesse. I'm Jose. I'm Gustavo. We are fans of your YouTube channel. And uh, well, we would like to make a review of a supercharger here in Costa Rica, but uh, there isn't any yet. So we, we're hoping to get uh, a few soon enough um, to be the first ones. And also we run into somebody into uh, our house. What's up, planet Earth? Steven here, just traveling the world and I happen to run into these guys who are fans of the channel and big fans of Tesla. So the movement of sustainability just keeps getting bigger. Yep. That's great. <laughs> big, big fans. We are waiting for those uh, superchargers. Hasta la pasta from Costa Rica. Steven, what were you doing there? <laughs> That's our buddy Steven. World traveler. Wow. Globe traveler. So get this. He He's uh, staying with these wonderful people, kind of just like doing a couch surfing thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they got to talking and they, they were like, oh yeah, we're big fans of these uh, YouTubers named Zach and Jesse. And he's like, I know Zach and Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> it shows that it's a real, it's a small world. Yeah. I got to talk to them. Great guys. Our friend Brian asked if anyone has seen a Frunk cargo net for the Model 3 or the Model S. Now, I've looked everywhere and online. I haven't been able to find anything. Have you seen anything, Jess? I haven't really been looking. So if anyone out there knows of any kind of Frunk cargo nets, please let us know and send us a link. Our friends Sobe and Max up at Avoto Rentals in Montreal, Canada, have just added a Model 3 to their lineup of Tesla rental cars. So they have an S and an X and now a 3 that you can rent. And as Sobe says... Um, it's an amazing ride. It is so zippy. It's a red car with white interior, and it will be available starting January 15th. Right. It's a long range. So, I mean, you don't just have to be in Montreal. No, just go for a road trip. Go for a road trip. Like, if you're from Europe and you want to experience a Model 3, give Sobe and Max a call. Do a Canadian slash American yeah. road trip. They're be the, pretty cool. They're the friendliest people I've ever met, mm -hmm. and we've used their service, and we've gotten to know them. They've They've actually held events to let more people in Canada know about the Model 3. So, like... Just a wonderful company. You need yep. to support them if you're anywhere near Montreal. So our friend Kirill has been contacting local businesses to tell them about Tesla's Charging Partners program. This is the program where Tesla will pay for most, if not all, of the cost of installing a high-power wall charger at a business. So like a restaurant or grocery store or even your office. To make it easier for all of us, Kirill has created a website with a template email so you can just copy and paste. You put in your business name and your name. And it does all the rest. So, I mean, this is if you wanted to send it to, like, your local supermarket. To right. be like, hey, there's this thing where you get a free charger. And now, I'll now normally your... you like, oh, I'd have to write a whole letter. But here he's written the letter for you. It takes two seconds, literally. It takes really two seconds. Right. And then, boom, they'll know about it. And right. he's been having great success. By the way, did you know that Santa used a Model 3 this year? I didn't know that. Yeah, take a look. What, so he gave the reindeers like a, the little the break, you know? Yeah. Nice. And our friend Scott in Texas sent us this video. Hi, guys. I'm Scott here from Dallas. We're headed to the airport this morning. And I wanted to show you something about the destination charger there. We're here at Dallas Love Field, parking garage A. Um, it's not technically a Tesla charges for all EVs, you'll need your adapter. And as we found out today, you also need a special card to, to make it work. But that aside, the really cool thing is it's right by the entrance to the airport. This is a huge parking garage and we usually walk a long ways, but the electric parking is right by the entrance. 
all these little tips and tricks. Yeah. You get a little, if you go into Dallas Airport there, you get a little uh, advantage. Yeah. I love it. Thank you, Scott. All right, it's time for our Patreon viewer question of the week. And so Arlene asks, As with most things AP, sometimes it works correctly and sometimes not. Two of my litmus tests for true progress are the right lane pull to the exit problem and the coming up towards the crest of the hill problem. No human driver ever fails those even a small percentage of the time, so they make a good litmus. Automatic emergency braking seems to be a bit more aggressive these days because I'm now getting false positives. Your experience? I don't have a Model 3, so no experience to draw from. Okay, so first of all, I want to talk a little bit about your Lipnitz test. First of all, the crest. There are, I know because in our area, there are a couple very dangerous crests where people have died. And, and just to remind you, a crest of a hill is means you're going slightly upward so that you can't see what's on the other side of the hill. And next time you're doing this, next time you're approaching a crest, just realize that you're pretty much driving into an unknown territory. Like you probably know that road, so you know what to expect, but imagine you didn't know that road. Anything could be on the other side of that crest. It's almost like you're driving through a curtain. It's, there's no real way for you to know what's on the other side unless there was like a mirror or something. So I got to disagree with Arlene and agree with Jesse. Many people do get hurt or die over crests of hills. Right. Um, and, and this is if, you know, we're talking about straight crests of hills, but there are some crests where it'll take a turn afterwards. Um, those are extremely dangerous and they shouldn't be built like that, but they do exist. And human drivers will drive off the road. 99.9% .9 of the time you go over the hill, nothing happens. But if there were a deer there or a you know a child with a ball, you would hit them. There's right. really no way for you to know they're there. Now for the, the, the right lane pulling change, I mean, I think that we have to kind of go back and look at this from a first principles perspective. Um, if, the, if you're behind another car in autopilot, and the lane suddenly gets wider because there's an exit, that's really not autopilot's fault if it wants to pull into that full lane because it, it can't see beyond the car and they didn't paint lines. If they paint lines on the road, that which basically shows that the exit is leaving and this is the road, which honestly I think they, they should, should do, do right. that the car has absolutely no trouble. It has been getting much better at knowing when there are exits and staying to the left. Right. I don't think that you can expect, based on the input of the car, to know that right. from a first principles perspective. And, and I would like to point out, if you're on a new road and something like that happens, you only have your past experience to draw on. You don't actually know what's supposed to take place there. Hmm. So, I mean, I think that it's not really a litmus test because there are no other cars which have done this, right. you know? It, it, a litmus test means that it's something that works. Right. You know, the, the, you've oh, used we in the past and you can use that it again in the future. This is a good test. Right. Um, it is a good little progress test, like a little check to see how well it does. But going over the crest of a hill, unless it's cutting out autopilot entirely, which it rarely does for me, it's just trusting that there's nothing on the other side of the hill. Right. Which I, I think all they've done in the programming is say, oh, you stop seeing a line for a second, just relax. It'll come back. Right. And that may not be the best thing to do. I mean, it's what you have to do as a human. I think that in the future, there could be some better implemented Yeah, we systems. could we could have sensors on either side of a crest that was sending uh, data to the car saying, all clear, everything's fine. Right. That would be great. That would be good for human drivers as well. Exactly. All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews. Take it away, guys. Here we are at the Mott Street Superchargers. There's a couple of them in this parking garage. Here's one. And there's one over here in this corner. Here's the entrance to the parking garage. It's in Chinatown in Little Italy, right in the center of Lower Manhattan in New York City. So there's any restaurant and store around that you can imagine. Hi, Zach and Jesse. This is Lenny uh, doing a supercharger review of the Queen Center Mall here in Elmhurst, Queens, New York. Uh, the supercharger literally opened up two days ago on October 3rd. And uh, this, is a, this is about a 10 stall uh, uh, urban supercharger station. Um, there is one spot over here that's next to me, but there's no, as you can see, there's no, uh, there's no charger right there. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but I guess if you have a test, you just park there. Hope this review helps. Hi everyone, this is Michael. I am at the Tannersville, Pennsylvania Supercharger. There are eight bays here, a couple around the corner there. Um, they are located at the Crossing Premium Outlet. Um, 
right inside the entrance, but you can't get to them right from the entrance. You actually have to go all the way around the back of this building by the dumpsters. But it's a good location. It can be tricky to get to depending on uh, where you're coming from off the highway. But since it is at um, the outlets, there is plenty of shopping to do. Um, if you're into that sort of thing, there's also a food court over there. Um, pretty good location. No garbage cans right by the superchargers, but I'm sure that there are um, along the shopping areas. I give this location six stars. All right, so I'm here at the Grayson Supercharger in Maryland. It is right after the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Um, so after you come over the bridge, this is on like a little spit of land on your way through Maryland. Um, it's a 12 stall, which I really like. Um, it's got a Royal Farms, uh, kind of a rest stop. And come with me, there's a nice little view waiting for you over here. Do you realize that we're the only place that I know of in the world that is collecting supercharged reviews and putting them all, first of all, for you to see here on the show, but all in one place on our website? Right. And it's on a map, so you know what supercharger is connected to what place. And it gives you a really good sense of where, yeah. you, what it is, what, it's what so is helpful. around there. And so we're just so happy to have you guys out there doing it. All right, let's get to the new superchargers this week because there's a lot of them. Yeah, the last superchargers of the year. All right, let's get into it. What do we got? Number 431 in Europe, the 8 stall in Falsfed, Germany. Number 26 in Australia is the 8 stall on the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. Number 59 in Canada is the 8 stall in Lincoln, New Brunswick, Canada. The 24 stall Urban Chargers in Westminster, California. 24 stall Urban Chargers in San Jose at Cherry Avenue, California. The 10 stall in Cincinnati at Marburg Avenue, Ohio. The 10 stall in Macon at Tom Hill Senior Road, Georgia. The 4 stall in Walker, Michigan. Number 598 in the U.S. is the 12 stall in Payson, Arizona. The 8 stall in Guangzhou at the IGC, China. Number 241 in China and number 1,429 in the world is the 6 stall at Jinzai, Jade Park, China. All right, so for B Free, we're up to 92 businesses. We are so close, so close to, to 100. 100. Once we have 100, I mean, that is exciting for any Elon employee to yeah. have 100 businesses to choose from. Yeah, and check this one out, Jesse. We have uh, Jeremy Riviera Rentals. So mention B Free when you're requesting a booking to receive 15% off the booking price. This is for Elon's employees only. They rent apartments in the city of Cannes, France. So I, mean, I think if, if you're later, going I'm, on vacation, no, I'm going there right now. That's, Okay. Awesome. You're not an Elon employee. Oh. You don't get the benefit. Sorry. Oh, I forgot. Yep. You got to work oh. for Elon to get the benefit. Hey, Elon, can you give me a job? I There's so many benefits <laughs> here. I know. It's true. All right. And if you're looking for a past video of ours, we have this whole uh, playlist of our autonomous driving future, which is a series of 10 videos we made about how autonomous cars are going to change the world faster and bigger than you think. So right. I think a lot of you are new subscribers. You may not know about it, but we put a lot of time and effort into that series. And I think you're going to enjoy it. Right. I mean, it's not this style of sitting down and talking. There's a lot of graphics, graphics and, and walking and cool camera shots that we spent a lot of time filming and editing. So definitely please go check that out if you haven't already. All right. It's time for our Patreon giveaway. It's the Patreon giveaway. We are giving away this Evanex Elon air freshener. It's Elon's Musk. If you want to know what he smells like, it's right here. Um, so what what are you doing here, Jesse? So I have the bin of of our patrons. So every every patron, every dollar that they support the show with turns into a chance to win. Who's gonna win this, Elon's Musk? This oh, they're stuck to each other. There Ooh. we go. This week we have Dennis Banfield. Congratulations, Dennis. You're gonna be getting Elon's Musk. And the last winner we have for our wind power giveaway. So these are the fabulous Peter and Will Anderson brothers. Uh, some of the most fabulous musicians you're ever gonna hear. Mm -hmm. uh, this album is recorded right here at Night Train Studios. A studio. Using solar energy. Solar and, energy. And the, the and album is called Wind Power. I mean, they're using their own wind power. That's very true. Um, so our winner this week is Alexander Fassler. Congratulations, you're winning a copy of Wind Power. And if anyone wants to go listen to it, fantastic jazz available on Spotify.
or go to Peter and Will's website and buy the uh, CD. Mm-hmm. All, all right. right. So you've made it to the end, and you're probably wondering, what are all those names that are scrolling past? Yes. These are all of the people who support us for $5 or more a month. Yeah, the big names give more, and then we get into the, the $5 names at the end. Mm-hmm. But So if you want to be on that end plate, support us for $5 or more a month. Right. Um, I also want to say that if you can't, if Patreon does not work for you, if you can't seem to support the show um, using Patreon, that's totally fine. We have an Amazon affiliate link, which is posted in the uh, description below the video. So yeah, a you, lot of people don't know how to get Click there. on the show more. It is a plethora of information. We put all of the links to all of the stories in there. Yeah, Brent, so if you're like, Brent what's Bobby your sources on that? We got our sources right down below. Yep. Um, and if you use our Amazon affiliate link, you don't pay us any money. You are just buying things off of Amazon, mm-hmm. and we get a small percentage, um, depending on what you buy. And it's pretty significant. I mean, we yeah. we are. It's a very helpful way to support the show without costing you anything. And, extra. and a lot of people say, like, I click on it, but nothing happens. Well, it brings you to Amazon. You just do your shopping like mm-hmm. normal, and then we get a percentage. It doesn't really tell you that, but it does work. Right. I can promise you that it does. Work. And we have a U.S link and an international link so if you are not in the u.s you can click the international link and it should work there are some countries where it doesn't work that's okay i've also had a bunch of people say what is this referral program you're talking about like i'm getting a model 3 or an s or an x um what are you going to give me so you are going to get six months free supercharging and if you haven't gone for a test drive in a model 3 you are going to get Nine months. Nine months of supercharging. So like for Jesse, free. Jesse just drove on a road trip, eight hundred miles for free. Right. I saved eighty five dollars basically. Right. Um, it, it, if I were paying gas, I right. uh, probably saved like I don't know fifteen bucks in, in, electricity. in electricity. Right. But still, that's not nothing. You will also get us driving to your house in the next generation Roadster if you live in the United States, Canada, or Europe. Next generation Roadster. 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds. We will show up at your house. You may need to bring a neck brace with you. Yeah, or for afterwards. We're not sure what it's going to be like. Um, Zach is the only one here who has experienced the 0 to 60 in 1.9 second acceleration. It was mind-blowing. Yeah, so you're probably not going to want to miss that. And it's, you also get, you know... I've talked to pilots, mm-hmm. and because I've given them rides in Sparky, which yeah. doesn't go that fast. And they've said that Sparky feels faster than what their jet does on the runway when they're taking off. So you can't even it's it's not even we're not even talking like roller coaster speeds right uh, this is incredible model 3 like my model 3 is like roller coaster acceleration this is like something different entirely yeah this is like uh it's like falling it's like this it's because you're getting about a g of acceleration forward so it's like falling sideways yeah that's how <laughs> fast you're going it's like jumping off a building but sideways and we're going to come do that for you. And people say, do you work for Tesla? And we're like, not really. We want people to experience this. We exactly. want this to be on your, you know, on yeah, your we, Facebook page. We don't want this Roadster to sit in a garage or a museum. Like right. this is has to be experienced. This is incredible technology. Right. And we want it to be on your, on your Facebook That's feed. Right. You know, we want everyone, you know, to basically be like, wow, Jerry got to drive in a Roadster. And it was the coolest yeah. video I've ever seen. It is, you know, the phone fell out of his hand and exactly. slammed into his face and <laughs> holy crap that must have been amazing and yeah, and, and you will have a tesla to show them that's you know? right and i mean we're probably going to show up in the semi truck right so we'll probably to be transport more than... the roads to exactly it's, it's going to be really exciting yeah thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video you may have noticed that there was like some bright lights it's because the sun <laughs> has been moving while we've been doing stuff so there's been reflections off of our solar panel table you i can... think only jesse notices stuff like that look at this know. look at how overexposed that is do you see that you can't see my finger it just disappears in the fire of the sun anyway thank you for sticking with us because you know we've been here for three or four hours recording this uh at not including the the tens or so of hours of of getting the news ready for you. Oh, can I just every give a week. big shout out to our newsroom? Oh yeah, we had a bunch of questions this week. We needed an answers. We put uh, something we needed on the newsroom channel, and within minutes, we, we got... had more information than we could possibly cull through. Yeah, it was wonderful. Do you know that we have newsroom people in fifteen time zones of this planet? Yeah. That's Every time we incredible. ask for things, it's like uh, you're going to be, uh, you know, interrupting somebody's <laughs> sleep. Um, so thank you to everyone who's on our newsroom. Uh, Fantastic. You make the show that much better yeah um so thanks everyone for watching now you know. know